Refreshingly better. I'm Jay. I'm Steph. It is better. <laughs> this is modern water. <laughs> Twenty twenty three BMW M three forty I. I think it's the sweet spot in the three series because it's got everything. It's got the power. It's got the looks. I don't think anyone needs an M. But, Spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. But there is a gasoline and a plug-in hybrid three series. Mm -hmm. But this one fits all the things for me. It's refreshed for this year. I think mm -hmm. I said that. I don't like repeating myself, but mm, here we go. <laughs> Uh, biggest changes are on the inside, but we'll start with the outside where there are small, tiny changes. Never a lot of changes with BMW, really, and that's fine. I also think that's fine. Yeah. I've had no problems with any of the looks of their 3 Series, regardless if it was from the 80s up until the nows. Now, uh, now having said that, it's the 3 Series is hilarious that it's the one that I said ever changes, because then there's the M3, which is completely different. <laughs> Because they went with the four series styling with the uh, huge. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody who's watching this video needs to be told this, but yeah. So the M3 has the massive grill. This has the regular regular uh, grill. Yeah. Now, yeah. a couple of small changes on the outside. I don't think anyone will notice unless you're a real BMW fan. They've inverted the headlights. They used to be at the bottom, and now they're at the top for mm. the daytime running lights. And, Little blackout portions on the corners. Mm. Um, small, minimal changes. Like the headlights are X number of millimeters thinner. Um, it's a three series. Yeah. And it's fun. And it's fast. It looks great. And since we've already covered the spoiler alert, that is one of the primary reasons why I would choose an M340i over an M3. Just I, the exterior look. I like it so much better. There's that tiny razor thin spoiler on the back and everything else is three series esque on the outside. I mm -hmm. don't have any issues with it. The inside is where there are huge differences for this model year. And right off the top, I'd tell you I would opt immediately for this red, having seen it in person. It's sort of like a magenta, a purpley red. I absolutely love it. But if you don't, BMW is happy to give you, give you plenty stuff. of options. Would you pay 1900 bucks for the specific Decora Red that you like so much? By the time you're what? specking out one of these cars, what? you're like $1,900 for the Red that I want. I'm going to live with this car for how long? But wait, mm. it's not nearly as expensive as you think. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that at the end part, okay. but it's surprisingly affordable considering all things that this car has. Yes, it's true. It's like a drop in the bucket, as they say. Color choices aside, the biggest difference here is the dual screen layout, which if you've watched any of our recent BMW reviews, you've seen this because um, it's making its way into most of the lineup. So it's got the the twin screens for the um, digital instrument cluster and the infotainment system. And then we've got a new shifter, the redesigned shifter as well, which is a little little paddle that uh, is nice and small and inobtrusive out of the way, but works in a really intuitive way. Be as quick as I can with this because we've gone through a lot of this stuff before mm -hmm. and we've had this for two weeks over Christmas. Uh, it's the first, second day of January when we're filming this and it'll be out in a couple of weeks. You can do everything through the iDrive controller. Mm -hmm. So that gets a big check mark from me. You can play with a touch screen, mm -hmm. which is a big check mark for me. What you cannot do through the iDrive controller is play with the HVAC. Right. And it's on a bunch of different axes and it pushes down as well. And I kept pulling the top of the wheel down in hopes that it would activate my HVAC, mm. but it's touch only. You mean this? Yeah. I can almost look ahead completely and not have to guess where my hands are, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, the graphics are nice and big and yeah, you can yeah. use your peripheral vision, but it's still not really ideal. Which is the okay. fact that you have to get into it every time you start up the car to put your heated seat on and, and it's not it's not great. This is the old style. Mm. I'm surprised that they did a whole, they call it life cycle impulse. It's just mid cycle refresh. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they kept a physical button for the heated steering wheel mm. and these old style buttons. I think they just decided not to update the wheel at all. And so it's the same keep wheel. the function. Uh, I do like the oversized sunroof. That's a lot of light. Yes. And even though it's a red interior and you can get a lighter colored interior, I would get the big massive oversized, oversized standard, is that a thing? Oversized sunroof. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Uh, looking at your head, the headrests 
go four ways, mm -hmm. up and down and forwards and backwards, which is nice. Uh, there's an optional heads-up display. I would pass mm -hmm. on it. I don't really care much. There was a thing that you said when we first got the car in the middle of December, and it was the finish. It is the... I think I'm saying it wrong. It's the... No, not the woven aluminum. Textured aluminum. Oh, yeah. This, uh, there's yeah. Four. I've, we can look at our notes if we want, right? <laughs> I think it's on the back of the Aluminum wall. fabric. Ah, that's it. Not even close to what I said. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't mind it. I actually really like it. Yeah. I think it's a really sharp alternative to open pore wood or um, carbon fiber. Wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto and a wireless charger. However, you do pay $350 to add that in well, this car. Would you? Yes, but you know I like I that my phone know. connects itself. I throw it in the wireless charging don't tray. Don't you care about overheating? I know you have a thing about your phone getting too hot. I don't. Well, so. I have one. <laughs> okay, we're going to get the highway, and there's a lot to talk about with the drive because it's, well, it's an F340i. Mm -hmm. So you hit sport, and that takes you into the sport setting, and then you have to either touch or use your iDrive controller to get to sport plus or sport individual. Uh, it says step is in sport plus. Uh, really quickly, it is the P58 engine, so it's a three liter twin turbo in line six, 382 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque, eight speed automatic transmission. And new for this year is the 48 volt mild hybrid. So it sounds pretty good. It does. Uh, we're, we're encountering too much traffic to make full use of this car. And that is a great segue into point number two as to why I would take this over an M3. Because in this part of the country, on these roads, with this traffic, unless you truly are going to track your car, and granted, most M3 drivers, buyers would, mm -hmm. because that's why they buy it. Mm -hmm. Unless you are actually going to do that, you don't need more than what this car can give you. You really don't. So BMW has added a sprint mode. So when you're in comfort, you hold down the left paddle. There we go. go. It's going to drop me into the lowest available gear. Woo! And it pops you into sport mode. And it's just a short burst to get out of a potential collision situation. Uh, or if you've got to make a quick maneuver or whatever it is. Um, so to get Still holding. out of that, you hang on to your right paddle. And that takes you back into your regular okay. drive mode, which is comfort. I think it's a great little thing to add. Uh, it's functional, it's handy, and it's right where your hands are anyway. The rest of the drive modes are the same as last year's, and those are Eco Pro, Comfort, and Sport. Again, with the Sport, you get your Sport, or Sport Plus, or Sport Individual. And I'm going to do a quick little flip into the Auto Start Stop section of this. So, gone is the physical button for your Auto Start Stop, and it's a little on the annoying side. Yes, it's probably the top two Auto Start Stop implementations in the modern automotive industry. It's quiet, you barely notice it. But when you do, it's in stop and go traffic. And he and still doesn't like it. I don't like it. And it's, <laughs> I don't like it when I'm turning left or waiting to make a turn. And it's a quarter of a second, but just that hesitation just makes me feel a little uneasy. Mm. If I just need to get through that turn quickly or for whatever reason, whatever's happening. The solution for that is to program your sport individual for all of your comfort settings. Mm. And because sport cancels out the auto start stop, so that's how you get around the auto stop start. Now, if you do run the auto stop start, then you're gonna see fuel figures closer to what NRCAN predicts for you. So those fuel figures from NRCAN are 10.3 on city streets, 7.4 on the highway, and your blended total comes out to nine even, and it's a 59 liter premium fuel tank. A little high. Yeah, but you're getting like this big massive engine. Yeah. And it's, if that's a concern for you out there, get the 330i yes. now you're losing like almost half the power or get the plug-in hybrid uh, there's no bad three series out there right between those two this one and the m3 uh, i still find this to be comfortable enough to drive every day mm -hmm. it's a little rough now there are a couple of things that uh, come with this out of the box as far as um, what separates it from the 330 and the m3 version so here you have your M suspension, your M aerodynamics, and your M differential. Uh, all of these are standard features on the M340i, so that's pretty smart there. The only thing I'd add on to this is adaptive suspension. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, like, I would still drive this every day, mm -hmm. and it's got enough comfort for me. I like a good adaptive suspension, mm -hmm. but this is um, this is livable. It's a good balance. Really? A livable? <laughs> it's a good balance <laughs> between. 
the stiffness that you want for spirited driving mm -hmm. and getting over some of the rougher patches of the road. Right. So, mm. you got $66,000 for the base model of this? Mm -hmm. Do you? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't have it either. Mm. But that's where we're at. So let's go on to the rest of the pricing. So it's 78345 is tested. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I get all the things, but I think if I were to get the base model, totally worth it. Yeah. I'm totally worth it. The things that this comes with, yeah. Now, if you wanted the 330i, it's 55. Mm -hmm. If you want the 330i E plug-in. E, yeah. 330e, right? Not mm -hmm. I, IE. Um, it's 50 bucks less. <laughs> uh, it's 54 nine fifty. I think it has and to be. And that's because of the, the threshold for... Yeah. Canadian government but, um, incentives for buying a plug-in hybrid. Which would be 4,900 bucks for the premium enhanced package, which gives you your auto trunk, your driver lumbar support, Harman, Harman Carbon, Harman Kardon audio, heads up display, park assist plus, and your 360 cam. I want it just for the auto trunk and the Harman Kardon system, yeah. So you don't care about the 360 <laughs> cam or the I do, up? but it's it's a compact sedan. Like it's not like it's a huge I vehicle. Know, I but know. I do like being able to just hit a button and have the trunk close and not get my hands dirty. dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I get that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the advanced driver assist for two thousand bucks, which is just a few safety mm -hmm. things. So that's your steering and lane control, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane change assist, and traffic jam assist. I feel a little bit like you shouldn't have to pay for adaptive cruise control in this day and age, but that's Especially a different matter. Right, I yeah. Get that. Um, then there's some standalone stuff. So we've, mm -hmm. we've gone over that you would pay 1900 bucks for the red yes. leather. And you would pay 350 for the wireless charger. I would, yeah. Would you pay 895 for the specific skyscraper gray paint? Um, that's a, ta a taste thing. I mean, you're probably paying for any color of paint other than mm -hmm. white or black on this. So, sure. And you would pay the 500 for the fabric trim. Aluminum fabric. I would, sorry. yeah. I, I really like it. The the texturing of it, there's some dynamicness to it. Okay, real quick. Mm. Okay. Okay. Super quick. Yep. All right, are you taking this or an AMG C43? This. This or an S4 from our friends at Audi? This. This or a TLX Type S? This. This or a G70? This. This or a Lexus IS500? I kind of saying, I but... I could have just told you from the beginning. I think this is the best. Better than an M2? Which yes. Which shares an engine with? Yes. The M2 I is think... smaller and the M2 is more agile. Uh, Why? Because we live in Toronto and we're not <laughs> so... going to get to ever use it. And I don't, I don't get to the track as often as I would like. I think this is one of the, if not the best value in the luxury compact segment right now. Look I do. that. I think the G70 would be the closest competitor. Mm-hmm. Not power wise, no, but, but it, yeah, size, shape, um, and pricing wise, and appeal, yeah, yeah. Just Genesis has that all in one pricing, mm -hmm. and but I just I love what they've done with this. I like the dual screens, I, I wish there was a heated seat button, but other than that, I can live with this. I like the shifter, mm, the here, the whole thing is so good and yeah. great. And I think the balance of power to price. Oh, you, it's how hard you to use it? Yeah, it's hard to, yeah. it is. It's 60, fabulous. Sixty-six thousand for a base. Mm -hmm. um, Just like we said when we reviewed the M550i, it was oh, the Goldilocks portion of the yeah. five series lineup. This is the Goldilocks version of the three series lineup. I think this is the it hits just the right notes. Yep, I would pay the extra ten thousand bucks, sorry, eleven thousand to go from the three thirty i or e. Yeah, up to this. Absolutely. So with that. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit that button below to subscribe and find us on our social media channels. We're on all the major platforms. We love hearing from you, so please connect with us, and thanks for watching.